Unbelievable details that surround this overpayment claim. That's me and my sister and my dad. I remember when he came to say goodbye and, and then he left and he was supposed to be back in a couple of weeks. For a child, losing a father is devastating. For sisters Beth Grinstead and Lynn Thurston and their mom Barbara, it was also heartbreaking. Anytime there was somebody that came by, we would run into the living room to see if it was him. Happily married and known as a devoted husband and father, it was late September 1968. They were just 11 and 13 when their dad, Douglas Grinstead, went on a hunting trip. He'd done it many times before, but this time he never came back. The search for him lasted for weeks. The sheriff used dogs and helicopters, community volunteers, even prisoners to scour the rugged terrain. There were people from our church, there were um, yeah, people uh, from the community that didn't even know us that went up. They did find his car, they found his campsite and several deer tags, but they couldn't find him. Seven years later, he was legally declared dead. There was compelling evidence that he was indeed dead. Yeah, and it was tough. The unpleasant formalities that always happen when a husband and father dies quickly went into motion. The Social Security Administration paid Douglas's survivor benefits to the girls and to their mom. Not a lot. For Beth, about $10,000. Lynn received about twelve, dollars And Mom Barbara used just over $80,000 to pick up their lives and raise her daughters. So if you die and you have survivors, uh, a widow, a widower, uh, or children, they get a certain amount of benefits. Attorney Jeremy Bordelon is a specialist in Social Security benefits. They have the right. He sees benefits like this paid out all the time, but what happened nearly 50 years later, he says he's never seen before. <laughs> this, this is pretty much as rare as they get. Two years ago, Beth, Lynn, and Barbara all got letters from the Social Security Administration wanting that benefit money back. They called it an overpayment, and their reason was their dad and husband, Douglas Grinstead, had been alive all these years. Immediately, Beth called her sister. And I step out and she said, Dad was alive. And I, I still can picture sitting down in the theater and turning to my husband and saying, Dad was alive all these years. Douglas Grinstead did not die on a hunting trip. He had simply faked his death and ran off with his mistress, never contacting a soul. He'd assumed the identity of a dead person named Richard Morley and had petitioned the Social Security Administration for a new Social Security number under Richard Morley's name. He legitimately died in Flagstaff, Arizona, December of 2015. 47 years after he disappeared and four decades after he was legally declared dead. All this time we thought my dad was a victim. He, something happened to him. And then just getting hit with the whole thing of, we were the victims. Victim or not, Social Security wants their money back. So Beth called him to explain and asked for proof that the dead Richard Morley was in fact their dad, Douglas Grinstead. He says, well, I, I had sufficient evidence. And I said, you know, what? evidence do you have? And he said, well, I can't say. But we can. This is Douglas Grinstead's handwritten confession to the Social Security Administration. He admits Richard Morley is an identity that he illegally assumed and writes, my legal name and identity is Douglas Grinstead. I can't even imagine the level of mess that that, that, that creates. That level of mess, the sisters say, left their mom heartbroken and expedited her death in September of this year at the age of 89. We had no idea he was alive, and, and that, that just, I think that's what shook her most, was that he would leave his girls. All right, so what happens now? Both Lynn and Beth have filed waivers asking the Social Security Administration to forgive the overpayment. 
Dan and Laurel, those waivers are pending. Oh, this is a stunning yeah. story. What happens to the claim against the mother who's now passed away? Equally hard to believe on this one. Before she died, 89-year-old Barbara also asked for a waiver and went before an administrative law judge. He ruled in court that Barbara would pay $10 a month for the rest of her life. And when she died, the remaining balance would be erased. Barbara died less than two months after that ruling, and now it appears the judge has reversed his decision. What? 36 days after Barbara died, administrative law judge Patrick Hannon issued a decision denying Barbara's waiver request, writing, quote, based on the waiver request filed, the overpayment amount of $87,058.60 is not waived. The claimant was liable pursuant to Section 204A1A of the Social Security Act. And again, both Lynn and Beth tell me they plan to appeal that ruling as well. Douglas, oh. sir, whoever he is, he should be on the hook for this. He's passed away and... and his family, his, I don't know who, I mean, it, to think that they would be victimized twice, not only by him they abandoning are the victims, them, yes. but then having to foot the bill for what he did is you, unbelievable. You think about it, this is his family. In reality, sure. That, you know, when you assume oh, a so family, yeah, sad. I'm just like I, I'm, I'm looking for the out the same right. way that they are, they that are you were, well, that everyone sure. is. I bet we'll see this on Dateline. We will keep you posted on this too as those waivers go through the courts. Great.